Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And another video featuring spray stains. This time, Distress Oxide sprays. I, what can I say? I love them. I love them. Did some very simple watercoloring. This one is for this week's color throwdown challenge. I will have a link to that challenge in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. It's open to everyone. There's a new one every week. Gets people thinking outside the box in terms of colors. That's what I always love. And yeah, pulled out some oxide sprays to do some watercoloring using this fabulous stamp from Simon's Stamp. This is the Joyful Anemone Background Stamp and it's just fabulous. And I use silver embossing powder, which for those that have followed me for a long time know, I don't reach for silver very often. It's just not my thing. I always go with gold. <laughs> but for this color combo, I was like, ooh, silver will work. And yeah, glitter paper, silver, splatter, oxide sprays, all the fun things. So I will have a link at the end of the video to my holiday 2023 playlist because I will continue to add to it every time I make more Christmas cards and holiday cards. And yeah, you can check that out if there's any you may have missed. And let's get right into it. So keep watching if you want to see how I made this card. Since this is a red rubber on cling background stamp, I needed to take my waffle flower grip mat out of my Misty. And then I placed the stamp in my Misty face up. And then I'm taking some Ranger watercolor paper, lined it up, put a bit of pixie tape on the back of the watercolor paper, and then I'll close the lid of my Misty and that'll grab the watercolor paper. Now you could totally do this with the stamp on the lid of the Misty, stamp it directly down. Like either way works. I, I switch back and forth. It just, again, it just depends on my mood. <laughs> but got the watercolor in place. I used my anti-static powder tool on the watercolor paper and then I inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink and I'm going to ink this up and stamp this a couple times to make sure I get all of that detail transferred onto the watercolor paper and I tilt it kind of back and forth in the light because stamping clear ink on white cardstock or watercolor paper it's a little difficult to see and then I covered um, the stamped image with Simon's silver embossing powder tapping off the excess and then I'm going to melt this with my heat tool which is one of my favorite parts I've talked about this a million times heat embossing is never going to get old to me especially with metallics there's just something about when it melts and turns shiny and metallic that is unbelievably satisfying it's like magic <laughs> so I just worked my way around to heat emboss the entire image and like always tilting it back and forth into the light to make sure that everything is shiny, smooth, melted. If there's any dull or greeny areas, you just blast those with the heat tool to make sure they're melted. And then watercoloring with Distress Oxide sprays. I shook these up off camera to get all of the pigments moving because with Oxide sprays, exact same as like the mica stain sprays that I've done a ton of videos with, the pigments settle to the bottom of the bottles. So I shook them up really, really well. I've got my little plastic palette here and then I just take the nozzle out like I'm showing and just put little dots onto my palette. You don't need much. I need more of the pink, but it was being just, it was being difficult today, but whatever. So I just apply it to my palette. You need less than you think. And then I'm just gonna watercolor with my little Tim Holtz detail watercolor brush. Same one I've been using for a million years, forever. It's been a long time. And all I do, swirl the brush in the um, little dots of liquid and paint. That's it. I've sped this up in editing, so it's a fair bit faster than, you know, I actually, you know, do. But even then, this was very simple coloring. I'm not doing any layering. I'm not doing any, like, mixing of colors or glazing or anything. I just literally paint with one color per... Um, type of image. So all the blooms I'm using Kitsch Flamingo Oxide Spray and this one I have to go back in and add a bit more to my palette because larger blooms and like I said this little nozzle was just being annoying and then I got a bit more in my palette and I was good to go. <laughs> so the color combo that I was sticking to for this week's color throwdown challenge was pink, green, and gray. So that's why I stuck to just those three colors. I decided to leave the background white, 
that's also why I didn't, well, not like I really bother to tape down my watercolor panels anyway. Um, again, depends on my mood. Sometimes I tape them down, especially if I'm doing really heavy water backgrounds. Taping it down just helps prevent um, it from warping a whole lot, but I'm not using a whole lot of water on this, even though it's a, you know, full A2 size panel. I'm not adding a ton of liquid to it, so it's not going to warp that much. And then, yeah, after I painted the blooms with Kitsch Flamingo, the, all of the greenery was done with mowed lawn um, distress oxide spray. And this is one of the things I love the most about painting with specifically oxide sprays. And yes, you can totally do this with just the oxide inks. I've shown that in a ton of videos too. You can just smush the ink pad, you know, onto your palette and paint in the exact same way. You will get very similar results. I just like playing with my sprays and I have them all, so I'm going to use them. <laughs> but the thing I love is how as they dry, you know, the pigments and the the liquid and everything, just the way they settle and you get that variation. Like you, all those large petals, you can see the variation, the, the greenery, there's variation going on. And yet I'm only using one spray, you know? So for the little berries of the image, I pulled out picked raspberry for that just so I could get a little, um, a different shade of pink, just a little extra something, something. So same thing, shook it up, applied little drops to my palette, painted everything, and then we're good to go. So once this was done, I'm of course going to add splatter, I, although I keep the splatter um, a little subtle for once. <laughs> uh, you know, there, you can never, like, whenever is splatter a wrong thing? But I used um, Kitsch Flamingo Distress Paint. I put a bit of it on my palette. And then with my fan brush, I had, you know, some water on there just to thin it out a bit. And then splattered this onto my background. And again, I kept it a little subtle. I didn't throw, you know, 15 kinds of splatter in five different layers like I normally tend to do. <laughs> so once I splattered all of that, as always, wash the brush, wash the palette. Distress paints do dry permanently. So rinsed everything off. We're good to go. Set that aside to dry. And then for my sentiment, I'm using the All the Joy wafer die. And I die cut scraps of white cardstock with that. And then the top layer, I had die cut from some of Simon's Pine Glitter cardstock, which oh, it's like the perfect Christmas green. And when I pulled out my package of it, I think I only have like two sheets left of this. And I was like, oh, great. I need to order more. <laughs> so two layers of the white cardstock top layer being the glitter. I die cut the outline from um, vellum. So I'm going to adhere this stack of the sentiments to the vellum outline. And I'm going to have to like spin the outline around a couple times because my brain just was not seeing it. I was like, how, how does this line up? What? What? There we go. It's got that lined up. And then I had one more layer that I die cut from white cardstock. I've shown this in other videos. Um, I don't always do this, but sometimes I do. And adding the layer of cardstock to the back, like under the vellum, this is going to pop the vellum up a little bit. So the vellum's going to float just a tiny bit. It just gives it that little extra something. And again, it just depends on my mood, whether or not I want to do this. Other times I just apply the adhesive directly behind the words, you know, so it doesn't show through the vellum and I just stick it right to my card. But sometimes it's fun to add this extra little step and pop that vellum up just, just a smidge. So after I had adhered my sentiments, like everything together, my background was dry. And I trimmed this down with my paper trimmer to three and three quarters by five inches. Like slightly smaller than my A2 um, card front. And then I'm using, I think this is Carnation cardstock from Concord 9th. It's a, it's a good match to Kitsch Flamingo. So I trim that down to just slightly sm slightly larger than this panel. I'm going to adhere these together with my craft tacky glue so that the pink panel just mats the, the watercolor panel. And then once those are adhered together, I, of course, <laughs> like a like a broken record, I'm using my Tim Holtz little paper distressor to rough up these edges because again, I just love, I just love the texture it gives and it's so simple. And and it's just, there's something satisfying about like ripping up the edges of your cardstock. So I went along all of the edges of the pink cardstock to give it that like roughed up, that roughed up look. And then um, I left the background stamp in my Misty 
My card base is a top folding A2 white note card and I put some um, post-it tape along the score line there so I don't get any like stamping or anything past the score line. I lined that up and then did the exact same thing. The pixie tape was still on the lid. So I closed the lid, picked up the card base, and then I inked up this background stamp with Simon's flannel positively saturated ink. So just a nice light gray ink. So I get that pattern on the inside of the card, but it's light enough that I can write right over it. And then after I did that, I'm going to remove the, the post-it tape, remove the background stamp, put my grip mat back into my Misty so that all my card socks popped back up again. Because when you're using clear stamps, you either use the foam pad that comes with the Misty or the grip mat. Either one, you know, works because it just pushes everything up high enough so that clear stamps can actually come into contact with your cardstock. So for my sentiment on the inside of the card, I used a sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp Holiday Blossoms stamp set. Um, I had already done a video um, with that stamp set and like watercoloring it. That one I used the Just Stress Spray Stains to watercolor. So that'll be in the holiday playlist. So I stamped the sentiment with uh, mowed lawn distress oxide ink and then um, closed up my card, burnished that score line with my Teflon bone folder, adhered my card front to the card base, and then I'm going to adhere the sentiment on top, such as applying the glue to the back of the little cardstock portions of the die cut sentiment. And then of course I had matching bling. I've got some uh, Pink Fresh uh, Blossom glitter drops and just, just put a few of them, just a few, um, on either side of the sentiment. And once I was kind of happy with the placement, I'm going to pick these up with my little embellishment wand and adhere them into place with little dabs of that craft tacky glue. Once these are adhered into place, you just got to let that dry and this card is complete. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link below the video in the description box. And in that uh, description box, I'll have a link to my blog post. And then in the blog post, I'll have a link to the Color Throwdown Challenge. I'll have the pictures, picture links, all of that, along with um, my supply list with links to everything I used. So if you're interested in any of that, it is directly below the video in the description box. You just got to expand it and it's all going to be there. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.